Welcome back to another episode of We Don't Know What to Watch, the podcast where two guys watch random movies thanks to the almighty algorithm and then talk about them. And with me today is the amazing, the incredible, the indispensable, the Jim Jarmusch to my Jim Jarmusch's hair, Kyle Mulford, and I'm Noah Saturn. How are you doing, Kyle? I'm a pretentious filmmaker is how I'm doing. No. <laughs> and they have cool sunglasses. And I've got cool sunglasses and wild hair. Yes. And I don't know how Jim Jarmusch talks, but I suppose it's probably like this. Yep. We could be way off. <laughs> I could be way off and whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I'm doing good. Uh, today's episode is brought to you, was going to be brought to you by tobacco, but it seems nobody's got any. Nobody's got any tobacco. Nobody's got any tobacco. Hey. <laughs> um, what did we watch this time? Uh, we watched Dead Man, starring Johnny Depp and Gary Farmer. And lots of other people, but we'll get into that. It was a special appearance by Robert Mitchum, very late in his career. Uh, his final theatrical movie, I believe. So, I mean, it was good to see him anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Dead Man. It's a 1995 film, black and white, by Jim Jarmusch. It's a Western. This guy, uh, Johnny Depp, plays William Blake, who's heading out west because he wants to be a cowboy, baby. No, I'm no sorry. No relation to the farmer, William Blake. Not the farmer, the poet, William Blake. The, po- the poet. He goes out west to get a job at a metalworks place, and they're like, you're too late. We already hired for that position. And And then he meets a girl, and then... He ends up shooting Gabriel Byrne in the neck. And then he's a wanted man by because that ended up being the Metalworks owner's son, Metalwork owner played by Robert Mitchum. Uh, and then he's just on the run and he meets a, an aboriginal dude by the name Ooh. of Nobody who kind of helps him on like he's taking him to like the, the Pacific Ocean to get in a canoe to go to his spiritual place. Ooh. And it's like, um, take him to a doctor, dude. Uh <laughs> Yeah, he's got a bullet in his chest, and the the I don't I, I don't know what is, like is he still Native American? Like I don't know is he like a certain tribe? I don't know. Like they call them Aboriginals. Um, it's actually played by uh, Gary Farmer, who is an Aboriginal Canadian actor. So and yeah, a lot of the uh, the Native at least the Aboriginal roles were played by Aboriginal actors. And this movie, from what I understand. They did their they did their homework and they used different languages and different cultures and represented different tribes as well as they could. Yeah, and they had the Cree and the Blackfoot languages. And um, one thing I read was that they uh, they had several portions of the movie where he was talking to other um, characters in either Cree or Blackfoot language, and it was intentionally. Uh, left unsubtitled and untranslated so that it would be like it would be just for those people who understood that language who watched the film would get those jokes or whatever and Mm -hmm. that that was for them and i was was like that's cool i don't this movie is it first of all it looks great because it's got cinematographer by robbie miller who's who does great work in color and in black and white he's done gets a lot of stuff with vim vendors Okay, I guess I didn't look up the cinematographer. I, I, do you know what else he's done? Uh, most famously, he's worked with Vim Vendors, I know, on uh, uh, Heart, not the one about Angels of Desire. I forget what that one is. And then he also did... Uh, Wings of Desire. Wings of Desire, is that what I meant? And he also did okay. Paris, Texas. Okay. Which is kind of, I guess, his previous Western-ish work. Okay, yeah. So Jim Jarmusch is one of those. I've seen one or two of his other movies. I saw Only Lovers Left Alive. Um He's one of those, what I consider uh, the film nerds filmmaker, because it's always film students that are like in love with Jim mm-hmm. Jarmusch films. And it seems to have kind of like a love him or hate him sort of thing. Yeah, he's he's one of those that's like real artsy for artsy sake. And and I I don't know how to put it. So like I found Roger Ebert when he saw the movie, <laughs> he gave it one and a half stars out of four. And his quote, he's quoted as saying, Jim Jarmusch is trying to get at something here, and I don't have a clue what it is. That's how I felt through this movie. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying with this. Mm-hmm. The tone, there is no tone to this movie. Because it feels like it's supposed to be like this spiritual journey of Johnny Depp. But they mm-hmm. keep he keeps putting in these goofy characters that do goofy things that would be funny in a comedy. But in this serious movie, it comes off as out of place and like 
just weird. Like, like it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. And there's kind of bizarre moments kind of punctuated by violence. Like one guy, it shows one person squishing another man's head. It's yeah. Kind of graphic detail. Like he's squishing a melon. I was like, Whoa, that came the, out of nowhere. The brain comes out and blood squirts out the nose. Mm-hmm. It's a very quick <laughs> shot, but still. Yeah. Um, and then the, when I was watching this, the, the there, there's a opening scene where, uh, what's his face? Uh, William Blake, uh, Johnny Depp is on a train and it's kind of showing time passing by he's sitting across from someone and it's kind of silent, like score wise. And then it cuts to the wheels of the train and you hear this, you hear this weird offbeat score. And then it goes back inside the train and it's Jim and and it's uh, um, Johnny Depp across from someone else. And then it keeps doing this. And every time it goes outside, it's this weird score. And as I was watching it, I was going, it feels like someone's just playing an instrument. It's like, it's not like, it doesn't feel like a score to me. It just felt like someone's just playing around with an instrument. And then after I watched the film reading up on it, I was like, oh, that's what it was. They got Neil Young to watch the fully edited film and just improvise the score. And I was like, that's exactly what it felt like. And it didn't make the Mm -hmm. movie better. It actually like was just like, it felt like there's a movie going on and then someone's playing a guitar over like off to the side or something. It's just like kind of distracting you from the movie. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I, for the most part, I did like the score kind of a weird existential, almost like a, like a solo when you're like a weird solo that comes on when you're tripping. I think the music was good. It just felt weird in this movie because like I said, it didn't fit what although i don't know if it fit the tone because like i said i don't know if there was a tone to this film because Mm -hmm. the score made it almost feel like there were there was tension and and this dramatic thing happening and this in this journey and then oh gosh you shot me in the foot i'm hit oh golly i'm gonna shoot somebody now what Mm -hmm. (laughs) like (laughs) what are you talking about billy bob thornton (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah because there were some scenes that like kind of like I thought were funny, but I didn't laugh out loud because I was like, well, that seems out of place. What's with this comedy in here? Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. feel right. <laughs> uh, you've got, uh, um, so Robert Mitchum hires some killers to go after William Blake. The in, the Indian that's like, uh, um, or the Native American that's leading him to his on his journey is, uh, his name is Nobody. And he thinks that because his name is William Blake, he thinks that it's the reincarnation of the poet William Blake who lived from 1757 to 1827. And this movie also, I wonder if it's trying to say something or or if it's just being artsy and just using the William Blake stuff because there's a lot of the stuff that nobody says that is actual lines from William Blake poems. And then there's other references like the girl that he meets is Thel and that's from like some book or poem that he wrote too. So a lot of references to actual William Blake. And I don't know his stuff to recognize any of that. So maybe that's lost on me too. The only thing I know about William Blake is that he was a, he was a plot point and mentioned in uh, the book Red Dragon, which was the first Hannibal Lecter book by, by Thomas Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess uh, uh, nobody, uh, Gary Farmer plays nobody. He, reprises the role as a re- reincarnated uh, nobody in Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai with uh, another Jarmusch film by uh, with uh, Forrest Whitaker. And nice. I've always wanted to watch that, but now that I've watched this and Only Lo- Lovers Left Alive, I'm like, oh, it'll probably be a really boring samurai film. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I did... I did like um, Crispin Glover's weird ass cameo in the beginning too. Yeah, I didn't even recognize him when it was like the man covered in soot who just starts talking about it and then like saying, "Hey, remember when you told me this when you were over here at this one part and this lake and this?" And I feel like that was supposed to be some sort of uh, like premonition thing because he was talking about laying in a boat and the the sky was moving and the water was moving, but the boat wasn't. You know, it felt like the landscape was standing still or something i'm going i feel like he's describing this and like he's basically saying you're already dead going out west and Mm -hmm. and you're just going to your death and like from the get-go johnny depp is just a walking dead man and like i was like i don't know what again like ebert said i don't have a clue what you're trying to say here yeah (laughs) um but i 
I, I did recognize because as soon as he he was he had his face covered in soot because he was like the mm-hmm. the the coal man on the train, and he comes out and talking. Is like as soon as he's like opened his mouth, I was like, is that Crispin Glover? <laughs> It's like what? Because I, I didn't recognize him either, and he's usually recognizable. But I think it was mm-hmm. the soot all over his face. But it, yeah, it was uh, that was just weird. And and like I said, I Jarmusch is just one of those that just makes for me boring films. Like they, they they're boring films that feel like they have something to say, but you, but don't really say anything to me. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of movie you want to like read an essay about. More than you actually want to watch the movie, like an essay. This is just sort of an interpretation, which can sometimes yeah, and, be more interesting than the movie. And I'd be interested to see like what people that like this film, what they get out of it. Um, maybe they know about more about poetry and they like they like the imagery of William Blake's poetry on screen or something. I mean, honestly, it was a like you said, it was a really pretty film to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, gorgeously shot, and and I did like some of the characters. I thought they were. Fun. Uh, this is another Lance Henriksen movie we've talked about because we did uh, that one. Uh, oh, what was it called with uh, Franco Nero as Jesus? Oh, yeah. Uh, and then did we do Aliens? We did with and yeah, because we did Aliens with Lance Henriksen. Mm-hmm. So is this our third Lance Henriksen film? No, because we did what? Near Dark. Oh yeah. Who knows? So so Lance Henriksen is a uh, is a staple in the uh, we don't know what to watch canon here. <laughs> Good for you, Lance. I love Lance Henriksen. He's we'll give awesome. you an award one of these days. And I like him in this too. There, there's just a bizarre scene where, like, he's one of the three guys hired to go kill these guys, and mm-hmm. and he eventually ends up just killing both of the other killers. And then mm-hmm. one, you don't actually see the death, but then you see him eating the guy's arm. It's like, oh, I guess he's a cannibal now. <laughs> well, and they mentioned that, like, they tell stories about him. And they're like. Yeah, did you know he fucked both of his parents, and then, uh, and then after he killed them, they he ate them. <laughs> Just like, mm-hmm. what the hell is this movie? <laughs> what, what? It just, yeah, it's just so bizarre. And, and well, and then we get. Um, I loved all the cameos because then there was this trio of two guys, and then a, a third guy dressed as a woman, and the two guys were. Uh, um, Billy Bob Thornton and Jared Harris. I love I love both of them. And then the guy dressed as a woman was Iggy Pop. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then you get Alfred Molino as a, a shop owner towards the end. So a lot of great like uh, cameos in this. Yeah, it's it's definitely well ra- well acted all around. So I can say I do like the performance. I thought Gary Farmer as nobody was very interesting. I could just like follow his character around all day. Yeah, he was he was cool, and I and I, I agree. I liked him too. He's probably my favorite part. But but yeah, like I don't know. I guess if there's not much else to say, should we go into whether you'd recommend this or not? Yeah, uh, I don't know. This is a weird one for me. I'm gonna say maybe once as a curiosity, but not a strong recommend. I'm going to do the same. I would say if you have watched other Jarmusch and you like his other films, then yes, by all means, watch this one because it's gorgeously shot, mm-hmm. well acted, lots of great actors in it. Um, and like with every, with all that being said, it sounds like I love this film, but it's like, no, even with all of those great things put together, it just, eh, it just eh. doesn't quite connect. I, no, it does. It doesn't connect for me. And if it connects for other people, if people like Jarmusch, and I know some people do it, and I know I called them out as the film student nerds, uh, but you know what? If you like him, you like him. And he's just not, he's just not for me. I, I don't. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he's not my director. I, 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 I've tried a couple of his films now, and I'm not into it. But so, I would, even if you haven't seen it, I agree with you. Check it out once, because it's not like you're going to hate it. You're just going to mm-hmm. go with, like, what is this? But there's some interesting performances and really great cinematography. So, yeah. So uh, what would you recommend instead of watching this film? Um, since this one was a it felt like a drama, but it felt like there was a lot of comedic beats and it didn't know what its tone was. And then there mm-hmm. was also a Native American who gave lots of words of wisdom that didn't really mean anything. I'm going to go with a movie that actually knows it's a comedy and also has a very similar Native American who just spouts off things that are just like really asinine Mm -hmm. and just kind of like the first half is a flip flop of the second half of what he says. And I'm going to go with uh, uh, Mystery Men 
and it's a straight up comedy about a bunch of superheroes, mm-hmm. but I don't know what else to recommend with this because I don't know what the tone was. I don't know what kind of movie this was. I don't know what I would recommend instead of this. So those that's my tie to what I'm uh, recommending instead of this. I guess yeah. Uh, with my tie, I'm going to stick with Robbie Miller, the uh, cinematographer. I'd also recommend, I'd highly recommend his work on Wings of Desire, directed by Vim Vendors, because that movie is in both black and white and color, and it proves that uh, Peter Falk is an angel. So you know, which we all know. We all know that. Yes. Uh, that's that, uh, and that's on my list to watch. I I still have not seen that one, and that's been on my list for a long mm-hmm. time. So I really need to check that one out. So I guess uh, now we get to move on to figure out what in, what in the heck are we going to watch next, Kyle? All right. We've got a short episode going this time. Um, 70 or better, and let's spin the wheel. All genres. All right. We got a brilliant CIA trainee must prove his worth at the farm, the agency's secret training grounds, where he learns to watch his back and trust no one. Hmm. I'm going to say this involves someone named Jack Ryan. Uh, no, it doesn't, but that's a good guess. Uh, it's got uh, Bridget Moynihan. Okay. Al Pacino. Okay. Colin Farrell. And it's called The Recruit. I see. From 2003. And this is on Hulu. Hmm. So we got a Al Pacino, uh, Colin Farrell suspense yeah, I- spy thriller. Yeah, I gotta say, it does sound like that. the CIA, of course, made me think of, you know, Tom Clancy's type stuff with his Jack Ryan series. But yeah, I, I can't. Re- I guess I'll see once I watch this. It, like, mm-hmm. I feel like I saw this when it came out in 03, but I don't remember if I actually saw it or if I just remember the trailers. Yeah. Coming out. So, uh, yeah, we'll check this one out. Uh, like I said, 2003 film The Recruit, and it's streaming on Hulu. And you can find us on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm at Noah underscore Saturn. That's spelled S-A-T-E-R-N. And I am at Awesome K-M. And we are on Instagram at We Don't Know What to Watch. You can email us. We don't know what to watch at gmail.com. And uh, like and subscribe and comment and let us know what you're watching and let us know what you thought of. Let us know what you think of Jim Jarmusch and his films. And uh, are we just complete idiots for not understanding the obvious, which is no a, a good possibility. And and I fully recognize that sometimes with some movies, sometimes they go over my head and that's mm-hmm. why I don't get them. And if if there's something you get out of it, let us know and, and let us know what we're missing from this. Yeah, because he clearly knows what he's doing. He has very specific taste. So it's not like he's just films are kind of sloppy. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like... He is a filmmaker. He is a definite filmmaker. Um, but yeah, he's just like someone that I just don't understand mm-hmm. with his films. And so, but yeah, I'd really like to hear other people's comments on their thoughts. Uh, until then, though, uh, does anybody get any tobacco? Uh, no, I don't smoke. <laughs>